So lab two, just to reiterate, because there was a question Max had before class, let's go over this. This is not due until next week, but lab one should be a piece of cake, and I would expect that you've already done it from last term. Some of you might not have, because you didn't have me in this class in 116 last term, but it should be pretty straightforward. If there's questions, I would expect to see, hear those uh, real soon. So lab two, I would expect that you'll start working on tomorrow. Write a program that includes a user-defined function that emulates the predefined string compare. Okay. Use large, a large character buffer to hold the initial string buffer, then dynamically allocate in main in main, dynamically allocate just enough space to hold each string. So string one, string two, you're going to recycle buffer, okay? So the, remember that we need to count or account for the null when we do the dynamic allocation. Copy the strings into this dynamically allocated space. String one will point to string one, and string two will point to string two. Your main function will then call string compare, not the standard garden variety uh, string compare, not std colon colon string compare, but rather your string compare that you are writing. And then remember it says that uh, string compare returns zero greater than zero or less than zero depending upon the comparison string one, string two, in the, the order of the arguments. Make sure that you introduce the program into your program the code and data necessary to appropriately test the function, exercise all possible control paths. So I want to see a demonstration of a situation where it's zero, it's greater than zero, and less than zero. Those three cases, minimum, uh, exercise all possible control paths within the function, Within the body of your compare function, use only pointer notation to manipulate the C strings. Remember to delete string one and string two when you are finished. All right, we're going to learn how to do those things, allocation and deallocation today. Okay. Questions on what it is you are to do with lab two? No? Okay. Why dynamic memory allocation? Well, if you have rectangular arrays and you want a, an array of strings, then allocating enough space for the array of strings is a huge waste of space, right? You could say string array uh, 50 by 50 and then when you enter data, you enter in dog, cat, bob, sue, and so on. Things that are of varying length, there may be one string out of all of that that is actually using 50 characters, including the null. So the dynamic allocation of memory will allocate blocks of memory to only that size that we actually need. That's the main advantage. We will see later that when we dynamically allocate nodes, or something we call structures, also known as an object, structures and objects are one and the same thing, we'll see how we can develop data structures that are much more efficient, faster, and um, maybe not easier to use, but certainly faster and more efficient in memory usage. So there are a lot of advantages to dynamic memory allocation. <coughs> dynamic memory allocation by definition, the allocation for memory is set at runtime. That's why it's called dynamic as opposed to static. What is static memory allocation? Kenan, how do we do that? 
How do we do static memory allocation? Just create the array. Create the array. Declare, define the array. Char 50, 50. Done. Allocated. Can you ever change that size? Can you ever change that name? Can you ever change anything associated with that array? No. It is static and it is allocated at the time we load the program into memory. Dynamic says, okay, I'm up and running, and I discover I need 47 bytes. So at that time, I will allocate just that amount of memory. Where does it come from? Well, there's this marvelous thing called a stack, and a stack can vary in size. We can, as programmers, we can control the size of the stack. Every program has a stack available to it. And the stack is used all the time whenever we call a function. Remember from CST 130, perhaps, or 162, one of those things, where when you make a call to a function, what happens? Well, we push onto the stack the return, oh, there's that word, push onto the stack the return address, that's the next instruction to be processed after the call, goes on to the stack, so it's sitting down here. On top of that, then we push the parameters that are part of the parameter list in the function call. Those go on to the stack. And so as we go to the subroutine, we do stuff and we come back, all of that space on the stack is released. So the stack is sitting, moving down here. There's special registers that are set aside to point to the stack. <coughs> but the stack is something quite large. We're only using this space down here as we make function calls. We move up and down, delete, allocate, delete, use the stack. Up here at the other end of the stack is some very seldom used memory that is very seldom used by function calls. It's called the heap. The other end of the stack is called the heap. And um, the C runtime environment, the C runtime environment creates, <coughs> sets up the heap and manages memory in the heap. It manages it, allocates, marks chunks of memory that are in the heap, as being allocated or deallocated. So if you say, I need 47 bytes, the C runtime environment will go to the, to the heap, allocate 47 bytes, says, oh, this guy needs that one, you can't have it, nobody else can have it, only you can have it, and gives that memory, the start address of that memory, 47 contiguous blocks of that memory, are then uh, allocated to you, <laughs> you get the address of it, and then you can work with that. You can reference it by pointer. When you're done with using that memory, you can say, oh, I don't need it anymore. Release all of that memory, or what we call delete all of that memory from the heap. Okay, so I think that's what we've just said here in most of this, this stuff. There are two issues with respect to allocating dynamically memory in, in the heap. Number one, if you forget to deallocate that's memory from the heap when your program exits, you got a problem. That memory is still reserved, still marked as yours, and you will never get that memory back until you reboot your machine. Is that clear? So, you want to use up memory quickly? Go out and allocate and allocate and allocate thousands and millions of bytes of RAM and then don't delete it. Now start up another application and you'll get an out of memory condition. Okay? So you want to be very careful to delete 
that which you allocate. And there are some tools that we'll learn how to use that do that. However, it's up to you to make sure that you deallocate what you've allocated. There's no magic here. There's nothing that's going to come along and say, oh, you forgot to do this. It doesn't happen that way. Okay. So memory leaks are critical to avoid. And the only way you get that RAM back is rebooting your machine. Dangling pointers are the opposite side of the memory leak picture. If you have a, a, a variable, you have a, a pointer variable, and it points to a particular location, and you say, let's deallocate that chunk of memory, let's delete it, that pointer still points to that memory location, but you no longer have access to it because you've deleted it. Is that clear? So a memory leak says you forgot to deallocate it. A dangling pointer was is that you, you deallocated it, but you forgot you did. And so you're trying to point to something you no longer have. The operators that do what we're talking about, new and delete. <coughs> new says, just give me just enough memory, give me just the amount of memory that I request. So <coughs> the syntax looks like this. Here's this key word called new. And new says, give me this data type. That's cool. Well, if it's just one, like char, Dwight, how much are we going to get? A byte. One byte. Okay. If we need more than that, we have to say how much more. All right. On the left-hand side here, we have our pointer name. We need to have a statically allocated variable. Statically allocated variable that will hold the address of something dynamic, right? So this pointer name right here is a static variable. It's a regular garden variety variable that can point to something. Notice the splat there. And the base type is what comes before it. So if it's char star or int star or double star or who knows what, but it has a qualifier the base type followed by splat saying that this is a pointer. How big will pointer be? I can tell you that in advance. No matter how much memory I actually allocate, how big will pointer name actually be? On your exercise. What is it? 32 bits. 32 bits on a 32-bit machine, 16 bits on a 16-bit machine, 64 bits on a 64 bit machine, it's the size of the address space, right? How many bytes does it take to point to something? On the other hand, how much we actually allocate is determined by the right hand side here. So in this example, pointer one is a pointer to an integer. The int is actually going to be four bytes long, and so will the pointer. So we've got a special variable to hold a pointer to something that's of equal length that we dynamically allocate. Not very efficient, is it? Have a pointer to point to something that's just four bytes long? Same size as the integer, why not just use the integer? But in any event, we make the case here that this allocates four bytes because of the size of the, of the base type. and places that address in PTR1. Likewise with these examples, new char, and then specifically initialize it with a letter A, capital A. So this, notice the syntax here, open and close parenthesis. Just like in static variables, when we want to initialize, we can say, uh, something like char x left parent quote uh, y quote right parent. That initialization piece 
is inside the parentheses. Same thing here. That works for single valued variables, not for arrays, which is also true in static variables. <laughs> here, new, double, don't initialize it. Here's the way to allocate more than one. We're going to allocate an array. We're going to say new char and then square brackets, just like in an allocation, static allocation for an array, square brackets. But what's inside should evaluate to a number, which will tell us how many. Now, this number, this, this thing that's inside of here, need not be a constant. Okay, it could be a constant, but since this is dynamic allocation, it need not be a constant. Is that clear? All right, so number of elements.